The augmented matrix of a linear system, assuming that you've written it in proper form, as I stated, is an array of numbers that captures all the important information of the system. Ultimately, operations will be performed on this matrix until it is one of two forms that is convenient for expressing the solution to the system, or solutions, or indicate there is no solution. By the way, I probably should have mentioned this in the previous. Um, a system of linear equations, okay, it's important that they be linear, has the following qualities. You either have one solution to the system, that is a unique solution, infinitely many solutions, or no solutions at all. Those are the only three possibilities for the solution sets to a system of linear equations. By the way, a system, linear or not, that has solutions is called consistent, but one that has no solutions at all is called inconsistent or an inconsistent system. Okay? All righty. Now let's talk about forming the augmented matrix for a given system of linear equations. Okay? First of all, we're going to assume that the system of linear equations has been written properly, and we've already discussed that here. But if the linear system has m equations and n unknowns, and the equations have been written properly, as I've stated, then the augmented matrix of the system with respect to that particular order of uh, variables is a matrix consisting of m rows and n plus 1 columns. You recall from college algebra that rows are read across in a matrix and columns are written up and down uh, like columns in a building or holding it up. They're vertical. Okay? Now, for the augmented matrix, each row consists of the, of the coefficients in each variable followed by the constant term for that equation. Okay? Each column is labeled above by the variable corresponding to the coefficients of each equation now represented as rows, and the last column is the constant column. It's usually unable, unlabeled. A vertical line sometimes is used to separate the column of constants from the rest of the matrix entries. Let's take some quick examples here. Let's take this uh, system of equations, 2x minus 3y equals 7 x plus 4y equals negative 11. Notice that this system is in proper form. Okay, now let's go ahead and write its corresponding augmented matrix. That's going to be over here. Okay, it's going to look like this. Now, the coefficients here are 2, negative 3, and then I've got 7 for my constant. Okay, and then what? The coefficient on x is actually 1 there. It's implicit, right? And then 4 is on y. And then negative 11 is the corresponding constant. Again, sometimes people will put a vertical line or a dashed vertical line separating that column of constants from the other constants being the coefficients. Now, what often happens here, at least in the beginning and at the end of a problem, you will label the column corresponding to those particular coefficients. Okay, so you see the 2 and the 1 are the x coefficients, so I label the first column with x. The negative 3 and 4 are coefficients corresponding to y in that system there, so I have that as the y column. Okay, now in the second system here that I've got written, first of all, you guys see that it is not in uh, proper form here, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to write x's before y's, but I could have written y's before x's. I'm going to write it like this, so let's be alphabetical here. I'll go negative x plus y equals 5. Okay, in the second one, second equation that is, I'll have 2x minus 8y equals negative 7. Okay, so now it's written properly. So that's negative 7. Now, if I was to write that as an augmented matrix, it would go like this then. Uh, let's maybe read up and down this time. I've got negative 1 
and 2, and that will correspond to what? The x coefficients. 1 and negative 8 would correspond to the y coefficients, so I label that column with y. And then maybe I'll have a vertical line or a dashed vertical line. Some people will use it as a dashed form. Then I've got the column of constants here at the end. So this would be my augmented matrix for that system. Now, in the following problems, what I'm going to do is turn this around and give an augmented matrix, and I'm going to write the corresponding equations here. Notice in this particular one, instead of x and y, I've used the subscripted variables. We'll be doing that off and on here. Okay, it can be quite convenient when you don't know how many variables you're actually dealing with and you want to deal with like a general situation. But let's go ahead and see the first row of the augmented matrix would be negative 2, 3, 17. So that would be negative 2x1 plus 3x2 equals 17. Okay, and the next row would be 0x1 plus 1x2 equals 10. Okay, notice that this second equation here can actually be right in a more simplified way. It could be x subscript 2, or x sub 2, is actually 10. Okay, and then the first equation is unchanged here. But do you see this is a somewhat convenient form for a system here if you're interested in the answers because here I've already got the value of x sub 2. I could back substitute that value of x2 in the equation above and actually solve for x sub 1 without too much difficulty here. Okay? All right. All right. We'll talk more about that later. Okay? Let's take a look at this one here. This looks like a nice form here. What would this augmented matrix be saying? It would say, be saying 1x1 plus 0y's is 4, and what? 0x plus 1y is equal to 5, and that would correspond in a simplified form to x equals 4, y equals 5. Now, this is important. I'm going to box this in here. Do you see? Um, this would actually correspond to a solution to our system. Okay? Now, I said earlier what we're going to be doing is performing uh, operations on our augmented matrix to try to get it into a form, or one of two forms, one of two forms where it's going to be easy to express the solution or solutions or indicate that there is no solution. And we'll talk about that later. You can see this is definitely a convenient form um, for reading off answers to our system here. Okay, let's look at the next one here. We would have, what, x plus negative 1y. Why don't we write x minus y is 9. And then we would have 0x plus 0y is equal to 1. And you could see that this would correspond to x minus y equals 9. And 0x plus 0y is always equal to 0, regardless of the values of x and y. So the left-hand side of that equation would actually simplify always just down to 0. So I would actually have this equation 0 is equal to 1. Now, that should bother you, since 0 is not equal to 1. In fact, there is no solution to this system of equations here. This is, in fact, a contradiction. 0 and 1 are obviously not equal. Okay? So this is one of those inconsistent systems. Okay? Now, let's look at the very last one here. It's similar to the one just above, but there's a fundamental difference here. Now, the first row corresponds to x minus y equals 9, all right. But the second equation corresponds to 0x plus 0y equals 0. And then this would correspond in simplified form to what? 0 on the left-hand side, always, for all x and y, is equal to 0. 
and you see 0 equals 0, well, that's certainly true. It's always true. This is true for all x and y. So this is, uh, this is a, uh, information that's independent of x and y here. So this is sort of redundant here. This is providing us no actual information about x and y. And the whole thing really reduces just to x minus y equals 9. Now, the set of all values of x and y that satisfy the condition that x minus y is equal to 9 is actually, what, infinitely many values of x and y. Okay? You could write this in a more familiar form, y equals x minus 9, and see that the set of all x and y satisfying that condition is, in fact, uh, what all the points that lie on the line, y equals x minus 9, that would be a line with slope 1 and y-intercept, right? y equals mx plus b, m is 1, so the slope is 1, and b here would be negative 9. That would be a y-intercept of negative 9. There's infinitely many points on that line. This is an example of a system with infinitely many solutions. Okay, well, in our next section here, we're going to start talking about starting with the augmented matrix of a system and performing what we call elementary row operations on that matrix to finally get it into a form where we can read off or, or figure out what the answer or the solutions to the system actually are. Okay.